Welcome once again. This is unhinged uh, ranting about the automotive industry on the way to the grocery store. Number 6,508. So, um, something just occurred to me, which probably should have occurred to me before. Uh, but I think I've always kind of trivialized flash floods, not which is not a reasonable thing. I just happen to have uh, been exempt from them so far in my life. But so modern cars, this car, uh, before a pencil was put to paper, there was a consideration for impact safety in the design of this shaft. Impact safety is like the core ethos of its design, in fact. Uh, I am surrounded by airbags. Um, God, I'm always seeking such a hot gear. Um, there are like the really as <coughs> astonishing things it's obvious how uh, the design of cars has changed with safety regulations um, and been influenced by them. But what's crazy is the amount of change that's happened. Like the proportion of the change, uh, they've done a good job in hiding it, I suppose. But like, this car's, like, is designed, its purpose is to get in a car accident. Um, like the whole, cons the whole, uh, the primary uh, function of the hood's design is to plow into a pedestrian. Anyway, I'll, that's I'm skipping ahead of myself. But um, if I all of a sudden like drove off of a huge cliff and did it tumble all the way down, I probably wouldn't survive. But the result at the bottom would be the cage of the passenger compartment, everything else would have crumpled, um, and the, and the, the pillars sent, uh, would have sent, they send the energy around the human space very effectively. So the car is designed to, to, you know, squish, absorb the energy so that I don't have to. But what if I get caught in a flash flood? I, you know, I'm not an engineer and I've not been active in talking about cars for a long time, but I, th I can reasonably say that there are virtually zero, if not zero, zero safety considerations for suddenly finding oneself in a flash flood or accidentally driving into like a five foot deep uh, flooded area of a road happens. I have a story if you want to hear it. Uh, <clears throat> not me, but um, like I think, I mean, basically if you, if we all of a sudden pumped like, took one of those huge pumps and pumped water in through the sunroof, like water would come out everywhere. Like the, the car is, if anything, designed to drain water, to pass water through it. So, um, why? Why? Okay, let's say, if we were to make it safer in a flash flood, how would we go about that? Well, um, I guess we would put some of that buoyant foam, kind of stuff it in, uh, in the empty spaces. Uh, but that's... Believe it or not, that actually adds up in terms of weight very quickly. Um, I guess we could we could put a rudder. Could even be like a really a plastic rudder that deploys automatically when it senses it's underwater. Except um, all the electronics in here. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, we could. You can have a, I don't know, 
a little three horsepower uh, trolling motor with a propeller on the back. Um, honestly, those the the actual steerage wouldn't add that much weight. The woman stuff probably would add a few hundred pounds. But this car weighs a round 1,000 pounds more than its equivalent did 15 years ago. And the only thing that's really changed is the safety regulation. So, 1,000 pounds for impact safety. So why don't we do that? Why don't we make cars more buoyant? Well, because it's a bit silly, isn't it, to just drive around expecting a flash flood? It's a bit silly to make, like, really any sort of significant um, engineering compromises, efficiency compromises, weight compromises, when the overwhelming chance, the 99%, 99% chance is that uh, it will be completely and utterly useless and I'm just like, I know it seems overly dramatic, but seriously, um, it'd be okay. Two things, one of two things that I would not have to say too much. It'd be one thing if all this safety shit was like, um, I don't know, even like 60 or 70% times more effective than a, just a seatbelt. Uh, but it's really not. Like, car accidents will always be, like, abrupt um, changes in motion are a real problem for bodies. <laughs> uh, and they just kind of always will be, you know? I guess this is gonna, this is gonna sound really dumb in 10 years when somehow cars have made made even more sacrifices to become safer, but like, and I, of course, there are contexts in which there are certain types of vehicles that basically definitely justify um, all available manner of um, safety considerations in their design. Those are the ones that never have them, though a school bus. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know. I just, I hope, do, so you get the thing that I was saying with the flood? Like, um, preparing to get in an impact accident? Uh, oh yeah, I was saying the, the one or two things. The other thing would, like, if the climate wasn't a concern, um, if we had unlimited resources, or even if we were, like, as a society, if we completely decided to disregard uh, the climate issue and disregard resource shortage, um, or just like, fuck yeah! Make my entry-level compact car into a fucking fortress. But, um, Tesla's two tons, all, the whole Tesla range starts at two tons, folks, because batteries are heavy, because leather is heavy, because electronics are heavy, and the first thing that you do if you want to make an efficient vehicle, if you want to develop a form of trans personal transportation that's as kind of the environment as possible, is you reduce weight. Um, yeah. What I'm really trying to say uh, is my desire to die in a car accident is <laughs> increases every day.
Thank you. Uh, stay live, friends.